Now we'll begin. All right, the service begins. We worship at the cross because on a cross, Jesus got rid of all of the bad things we do. We light a candle to remind us that Jesus is always with us. And the service begins. We ring the bell to remind us that it's time we, to listen to God's word. Anita, if you want to ring the bell. There we go. Thank you. To sing to God and to pray to him together. So memory treasure, uh, let's say it together. It is by grace you have been saved through faith and is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. And then we'll join in singing, Jesus loves me. is kind of harder, but the reason I, I want to uh, learn this one is because this is very similar to what we would learn in our grade school and our high school, especially as we have Reformation coming up. So let's say Ephesians 2 again. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We worship God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say amen together. Amen. amen. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, come and be with us today. Bless our worship. Give us understanding as we listen to your word. Give us joy as we sing to your glory. Give us peace as we bring our prayers to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. We say amen together. Amen. So we confess our sins and receive forgiveness. Dear children of God, our God is holy. He does not sin. Our God is holy. He does not want us to sin. We are sinners. We do what God tells us not to do. We fail to do what God tells us to do. Let us tell God that we have sinned with these words, God, I have sinned. God, I have sinned. Let us tell God that we are sorry we have sinned with these words, God, I am sorry. God, I am sorry. Jesus died on the cross instead of you. Jesus' death pays for your sins. You can be certain these words are true when you say, Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. Through faith in Jesus, God forgives all your sins. Let us tell the good news in this way, God forgives me. God forgives me. So let us respond to God's forgiveness. Let's, we say, thank you, God, for taking away my sins. 
Thank you, God, for taking away my sins. As forgiven children of God, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us. Now we know that we have forgiveness for all our sins. Now we know that we are your people. Now we know that we will live with you in heaven someday. And we say amen together. Amen. See our memory treasure. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And we'll join in singing, God Loves Me Dearly. the first Queen Elizabeth of England. That there was a woman that was upset with the queen for some reason. And so she was able to sneak into the palace and hide in the queen's closet. Not realizing that one of the jobs of the servants was to go throughout the room before the queen entered to make sure there wouldn't be any would-be assassins. And they found the would-be assassin hiding in the closet. <clears throat> they brought her to the queen and the would-be assassin, then she begged for mercy. She begged for the queen not to kill her. And the queen said, I will spare your life by my grace. And you think the story might end there. She'd be gone and go, go free. But it doesn't end there because the queen did something else. Not only did she let that would-be assassin, someone who wanted to kill her, go free, she gave her a job. She gave her a job in the palace to be her servant. And the woman served the queen so well, she eventually became the one who went into the rooms to look for would-be assassins. And, and I like that story because that woman is us, isn't it? That is a very real connection between us and the king, the king Jesus. That we were there hiding in the closet in a way that we went along with all of the Jews and the disciples and the Roman soldiers, that we were there betraying Jesus, denying him, arresting him, slapping him in the face, spitting in his face, scourging him, putting him up on the cross, nailing him there, mocking him, killing him. Then when he's dead, driving a spear into his side and burying him in a tomb. The difference between us and that would-be assassin is we actually follow through. We actually did kill the king. But here's what our king does. That our king sets us free. He says, you are forgiven. You're free to go by my grace. It is by grace you have been saved. It is undeserved love. We don't deserve love, do we? We deserve like that woman deserves. She deserved to be thrown in prison or worse, to be killed. We deserve to be killed and then thrown in prison, to be thrown in the prison of hell. But Jesus, in his grace, he sets us free. But more than that, he puts us to work. 
Isn't that amazing? Here we are, the killers of the king, the murderers of the Son of God, and what does that king and Son of God do? He not only sets us free, but then he puts us to work. He puts us to work in his kingdom. That's why you're here this morning, isn't it? Because you want to serve him the rest of your life, like that woman did, wanting to serve the queen because of her grace. Now we want to serve Jesus, our King, for the rest of our lives. And so we come today to worship him. What are some other things that you do to continue to show Jesus that you're his servant? What are things that you do? Serve other people. Okay, how do you serve other people? Well, lots of ways. <laughs> Physical, um, I take care of Anita. Yeah, take care of Anita. Take care of your husband, or whom we're going to pray for. Right. Uh, take, I give to my church. I donate. I, I'm on the altar guild. Yep. Um, yep, you're on the altar guild. What else? What are the things you do? Bible study. You go to Bible study because you want to hear from him. Uh, I think, I always think of the Bible like a love letter. You know, if you know, maybe when you were dating, you were writing love letters to each other. Maybe you don't do that anymore since you're married. Uh, like I was texting my wife just before she was here. She said, while you're here, look for my red spoon because I brought her red spoon up for we had our uh, outdoor service up here in the meal and now it's not downstairs. I said, I will buy you two new red spoons. So we'll, go, we'll make a date of it. We'll go to the store. And I don't know how romantic that is. But, uh, but I think of the Bible like it's uh, 63 love letters from God to us. And when we, when we don't read it, when we're not in Bible study, it's like we don't care. What are other things we do? Yeah, we read our Bible. We do our devotions so we're close to him. One of the things I was uh, talking about with our leaders, and I was at a conference and I was talking about this, is I'm doing a podcast every week, and it takes a, lot, a long time, probably five hours for me to study the five chapters. And yet, that's five hours every week that I am in depth in saying, not just reading it, but uh, applying it, law, gospel, application, things I wouldn't do if I was just reading it on my own. So really digging in. What are other things you do? Share with others. Yeah, share Jesus with others. So that's one of the things to do is invite other people to hear about grace. That's the thing. There's a lot of other people out there in the world just like us, except they're murderers, but they don't know that they've been forgiven by the king. They haven't heard about grace. They don't know about this forgiveness. They haven't been put to work in service of the king who has forgiven them and set them free. So we get to go and tell them, invite them to your worship service at the church, this church or your church. Invite more and more people to come for Jesus cares. Sit down and talk with them one-on-one -on -one at work, at school, wherever it is. Just tell them more and more about Jesus. And isn't that a wonderful thing? Uh, and and one, one last thing, I think, is just the way you interact as, as husbands and wives, as parents, as children. You're serving each other. Why? Because you're serving Jesus, because you're serving your king. And so as we get ready to celebrate Reformation, that's why I wanted to use that verse of Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. That's something that was lost before the Reformation. There was no grace. It was what you do, and because you looked at God as the judge. But Martin Luther, by God's grace, was able to rediscover grace. And we as Lutherans, we cherish that. Cherish it for ourselves, cherish it for others to share it. We'll go back to our memory treasure. We'll say it together. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So let us respond to God's word by saying the Apostles' Creed. Let us respond to God's word by telling everyone what we believe about God, who is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We tell everyone that we believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, with these words, I believe in God the Father. 
I believe in God the Father. And we'll sing, Father, I adore you. We believe in God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We tell everyone we believe this with these words, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We tell everyone we believe this with these words, I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit. God gives us all we have and all we need. We show that we are thankful by giving our offerings to God. Anyone like to uh, take the offering plate this morning? All right. Thank you. And then let's pray. We'll talk to God about what you have requested. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for Gavin not to have any more seizures and have limited side effects from the medication to prevent the seizures. We also pray for the friend Kathy May for tests to come back cancer-free. Lord, we pray for Anita's dad, Dennis, uh, that you hold your a healing hand as, and you take care of him as he is undergoing a cardiac catheterization this Wednesday. Lord, we pray for uh, all those that are dealing with loneliness and depression that you would hold them close and bring them joy. And Lord, we also pray for Pastor Westra that he accepts our call to serve as our second pastor here at Water Life so that we can continue to do as we talked about in our devotion of sharing more grace with more and more people. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Then as we pray the Lord's Prayer, understand that I changed the wording a little bit because we're using the new words or the new version of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and so there's just a couple of differences in that the, the these and the thous and the arts aren't in there because this is very similar then to what we use. Well, this is exactly what we use on Sunday morning for our worship. So we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile on you and show you his love. The Lord lead you to live in his peace as his forgiven child. And we all say amen. Amen. Our memory treasure again. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. The service ends. And again, would you like to ring the bell? <laughs> and then we'll close by singing a few verses of By Grace I'm Saved. next Jesus Cares on the fourth Sunday of November. That would be the 27th of November, so two days after Thanksgiving. So we'll obviously have a Thanksgiving-themed uh, Jesus Cares, and so you're invited to share God's grace and invite more people to that service as well. <laughs>